There's a lot going on on the board right now, but this video will explain the difference, hopefully conceptually, about the difference between specificity and sensitivity. Two very high yield topics, not only for testing, but also for board material. So let's go over different, the difference between sensitivity and specificity. Now, uh, without going over any concepts, if you, if you remember these two equations, so sensitivity be, meaning true positives, true positives, divided by true positives plus false negatives. So we're dealing with a column, the first column, then, uh, then that'll get you most likely a point on the board. Uh, and then likewise for specificity, true negatives divided by true negatives plus, plus false positives. So we're dealing with the second column, uh, always have the true on top. Uh, calculating sensitivity and specificity is a very high yield subject. However, Besides just memorizing this equation, memorizing is good for points, but it's not good for concepts. So let's try and discuss what sensitivity and what specificity is. And you may have heard uh, the spin in and snout. Spin and snout. Now, this has typically been taught, uh, I think, pretty poorly. Um, what it's trying to go for is sensitivity, SN, so S for sensitivity, sensitivity, out, snout. It rules out a disease. Spin, for specificity, SP for specificity, rules in a disease. Now, what is what in the world are we talking about? Well, I have kind of something that I wrote out and then a little example down here in the black. Um, let's quickly talk about sensitivity because typically you're gonna start screening a general population. So in a population, let's say in a medical school class. In a medical school class population, if you have a high sensitivity test that approaches 100%, so we're gonna administer a test to them that's very, very sensitive. And the test is negative, so let's do a diabetes screening test, for example. And that test is negative, so it says you don't have diabetes. You can be darn confident that the subjects do not have the condition. So, that's what sensitivity means. If a test is extremely sensitive and it says that the test is negative, then most likely it's negative. It's going to be able to rule out a condition. Now, if that still doesn't make sense, hang on with me because I'll give you an example that hopefully will tie this together. Now, the spin in, the specificity in, goes for, uh, in the medical school population that we're describing, if you have a high specific, if a very specific test for, uh, for diabetes that approaches 100% specificity, and the test is positive, it means that that patient will actually uh, most likely have diabetes or whatever condition you're, you're going for. What does that mean? So let's, let's tie this in with an AIDS example. So this is gonna be more of like a real world tie-in because for AIDS, you always screen with an ELISA test. Now, I do uh, plan on making a video regarding the ELISA test, uh, kind of the basics of it, but just realize for now that an ELISA test is very sensitive, or uh, sensitive, but not very specific. So it's very, or not very, but highly sensitive and not very specific. So it's a great screening tool. We're gonna use it to screen a whole bunch of patients. It's very cost effective compared to some other testing. Uh, so we're gonna use it to screen the whole population of the United States, 350 million people. And we're gonna be able to rule out quite a lot because since it has a high sensitivity, so almost a high sensitivity, and if the test is negative, so if I have a negative ELISA test on patients one, two, and three, it means that patients one, two, and three most likely don't have AIDS. However, uh, let's say we have a positive example on patients four and five. Now, it technically doesn't mean that they have the disease because spin in specificity means that they are in the disease, that they actually have the disease. So if, if a test is very sensitive, like this ELISA is for AIDS, and it's positive, that positive may not mean that they have it. It just means that they could have it. But if it's negative, it means that these probably don't. So that's 
That's the first part of the test. And, if, and in the real world, if a patient tests positive for AIDS on their ELISA test, you typically run that ELISA test again. So you run it again, still positive. It doesn't mean that they have AIDS. It just means that they tested uh, that they may have antibodies cross-reacting cross, uh, uh, to the AIDS test. So now we're going to move on to our Western blot. Our Western blot is highly specific, but it's not very sensitive. You don't test a Western blot on all 350 million people in the United States to rule out AIDS. You don't do it. It's not very sensitive. But, however, it is very specific. Specific, we rule in a disease. So let's say it's positive for patient 4 and negative for patient 5. Our Western blot, or our ELISA picked them up, and now we do a Western blot. So this is a real world example. You do two ELISAs and a Western blot uh, after those ELISAs, typically on AIDS patients. Since it's highly specific, we're going to have a positive test on 4 and a negative test on 5. A positive test spins in. So patient 4 is going to have AIDS. Patient 5 will not have AIDS. Uh, and that's, that's the kind of basis of sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is going to be your screening tool to get a large population and try and figure out. For SLE, for systemic lupus, there's a lot of, uh, there's drug-induced lupus. You may actually not have uh, the autoimmune disorder of lupus. However, certain drugs may mimic that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different clinical correlates that you can throw in here. Sensitivity is going to pick up the disease. Specificity is going to uh, hone in on that disease and make sure that it's specific for it.